To move an airplane, we need thrust. Lots of thrust. And to generate thrust, we need an engine. The beating heart of every commercial aircraft is the remarkable turbofan engine. If you've ever traveled, chances are your flight has been powered by these incredible feats of engineering. Today, we'll dissect the entire process of how these engines work and the insane engineering that make up the turbofan engine. So, a turbofan engine's operation could be simplified into five main stages. As we move from the first all the way to the fifth, we also move from the front of the engine to the rear. So the first stage is the intake or ingestion stage. It's called ingestion as the fan rotor, which is the massive rotor we see from the outside, ingests enormous amounts of air. This incoming air stream is split into two sections. Most of the air is bypassed around the interior of the engine and exits from the rear. This is called the bypass air. We'll get into more detail on why this air stream is so important in the fifth stage. But till now, the important thing to remember is that the bypass air is channeled around the engine interior and the remaining air is directed into the intake of the compressor which leads us to the second stage the compression stage increases the pressure of the air first the air passes through a low pressure compressor and then through a high pressure compressor modern turbofan engines use an axial compressor meaning that the airflow is parallel to the axis of the compressor's rotation. Each compressor is split into multiple stages to increase the pressure incrementally. The pressure is usually multiplied by a factor of 4.3 over the entire compression stage. Temperatures at the end of the compression stage could reach up to 450 degrees Celsius. Modern high pressure compressors are machined using a blisk design where the blades and the disc are machined from a single piece of metal or billet. This method allows for a lower weight and enhances the overall efficiency of the compressor. Between each rotor, a stator is installed to channel the airflow to the next rotor. The stator also helps increase the pressure of the air. I will not be going into much detail on how these compressors work, I'll be covering that in a separate video, so don't forget to subscribe. So the third stage is combustion. The combustor main function is to mix the incoming pressurized air from the compressor with jet fuel sprayed from an array of nozzles. After combining the air and fuel, it is ignited in the combustor. This produces exhaust gases and very high temperatures of up to 1700 degrees Celsius. The burner itself is arranged in the shape of an annulus, sort of like a donut. The air passes through the liner, mixing with the fuel, which passes through a series of injectors, after which it is burned in the combustor. The gases or combustion products exit the combustor with approximately the same pressure, just slightly lower than that at the entry. And from the combustor, the gases are expelled into the turbines, which leads us to the fourth stage. You see, the fourth stage is where the magic truly happens. The hot gases enter a series of turbine blades with an immense velocity. You may notice that the size of the turbine configuration is smaller than the compressor configuration. This is because the exhaust gases are moving from a place of high pressure to a place of low pressure. Basically, they want to exit the engine. However, in the compressor, the pressure has to be increased more gradually. That's why we need more stages, because the air doesn't want to be pressurized. The gases first enter the high pressure 
and then the low pressure turbine, which extract the energy from the flow of the gases to turn the rotor blades. The energy transferred to the turbine blades is used to power the compressors and the fan rotor. You see, the power is transferred by two concentric shafts. That's why it's called a two-spool configuration. The outer shaft couples the high-pressure turbine to the high-pressure compressor. And the inner shaft couples the low-pressure turbine to the low-pressure compressor and fan rotor. This allows the rotation of the two shafts to be independent of each other. Therefore, the low-pressure shafts will have a lower rotation speed. As was the case in the compression stage, between each rotor, a stator is positioned to direct the exhaust gases to the next turbine rotor. When the exhaust gases pass through the turbine stage, it is channeled into a nozzle, which leads us to the fifth stage. You see, a nozzle is a relatively simple device which expels the gases back into the free air stream. Now, if you remember, we mentioned the bypass air in the first stage. Well, that is extremely important for noise reduction. You see, this bypass air surrounds the core exhaust gases coming out of the turbines, acting as a sheet, which greatly reduces noise levels. The bypass air also generates the majority of the thrust as it makes its way to the rear of the engine, increasing its velocity. This action allows more air to be sucked into the fan rotor, which in turn increases the thrust of the engine. Guys, if you enjoyed that explanation, let me know in the comments below what you think. And also, let me know if you'd like me to cover more engine types and aviation related topics. In the meantime, until next week, I highly recommend you watch this video next. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.